EMI gasket mounting should be considered early on in the design stage. Trying to retrofit a gasket on a flange that wasn't designed to take one will narrow your gasket options or be unattainable and some redesigning may be required. As a general rule, the more land area available to fit a gasket will give greater options. Many mounting methods are available, some of which are pressure sensitive adhesives, form in place, clip on, slot mounting, mechanically captured and groove channel mounting. The application will generally dictate which method is used, i.e. door seals, access panel seals, etc. To get good contact with the gasket, a certain amount of compression needs to be applied. This will vary depending on the gasket type and the application. Rigid flanges with many fixings can compress hard gaskets but care should be taken to ensure bowing of the flange between fixings does not occur. For cabinet doors requiring several metres of gasket strip, a very low compression force gasket will be required, unless the cabinet is of robust construction and the door is hydraulically operated. Conductive fabric over foam lip seals offer the lowest compression force as the gasket deflects. Beryllium copper fingers can also be very easy to compress but can suffer damage through snagging and broken fingers. Sponge or hollow tube type gaskets such as knitted wire over a rubber core offer medium forces and solid silicone rubber seals loaded with conductive particles will be the hardest to compress but of course would offer a good dust and moisture seal. Many enclosures as well as having to meet EMC requirements may also need to meet an IP ingress protection rating. Metallic gaskets such as beryllium copper fingers and knitted wire mesh will not provide dust and moisture protection, so an additional rubber seal will be required to provide this. These can often be incorporated as part of the EMI seal, but can make the gasket wide, requiring more land space for the gasket. Conductive fabric over foam gaskets will give adequate dust protection but moisture can wick along the surface of the material. Conductive elastomers will provide excellent dust and water sealing up to IP68. When two different metals are in contact with each other, in the presence of moisture, or more so in salt spray, galvanic corrosion will occur. It is therefore important to try and match as closely as possible the conductive gasket metal to the enclosure metal on the galvanic scale. For example, a nickel coated, plated or painted enclosure in contact with a nickel coated graphite in silicone elastomer gasket will be a perfect match. However, at the other end of the scale, a silver or copper based gasket in contact with aluminium in a salt spray environment, corrosion will rapidly take place causing a breakdown in the conductive joint as the potential difference between the materials is great. Conductive gaskets can offer shielding effectiveness up to 120 dB. However, this is under perfect testing conditions. High contact resistance between the gasket and enclosure can negate any shielding effectiveness of the gasket. High resistive pa passivation finishes or oxides on gasket mating surfaces will cause the gasket to fail as there will be little or no conductive path between the gasket and the mating surface. This is particularly a problem with smooth surfaced gaskets such as conductive fabric over foam as only small amounts of pressure can be applied. Aggressive rough finish gaskets such as wire mesh will penetrate the resistive finish but these may not be suitable for the application. It is therefore important that particular attention is paid to the mating surface cleanliness and that it has a good conductive finish. Do you need to shield in the magnetic as well as the electric field? Most military and aerospace applications require magnetic H-field shielding Therefore, a gasket with a reasonably high metal content 
that has a high permeability will be required. A magnetic field will induce a current in the shield. Therefore, knitted wire mesh, beryllium copper fingers and metallic filled elastomers work well. For low frequencies around 10 kHz, the more metal content, the better. For very low frequency H fields, exotic materials such as new metal shields will be required. Electric field, E field and plane wave shielding is easier to control and all EMI gasket types will work up to their own limitations. Gaskets are prone to damage and wear and tear and this should be taken into account. A door with a knife edge closure that has a sliding or shear force on the gasket will give excellent performance and to some extent will be self-cleaning but when opened and closed many times will abrade the gasket surface so metal type gaskets such as beryllium copper or knitted wire mesh would be the best choice. However, all gaskets should be inspected periodically and replaced if necessary. Many gaskets are fit and forget and only see the light of day during maintenance or repair. However, it is very easy to over compress a gasket during fitting, which will cause it to extrude out between the two flanges and possibly break. This can be eliminated by providing a compression stop for the gasket or compression stops or collars can be fitted to many types of flat gasket. EMI gasket cost is difficult to determine as it has to be application specific and installation time should be taken into account. Designing in the gasket in the early stages and taking advice from an EMI gasket company will help you achieve the lowest cost route. There are many different types, profiles and materials available, but once you have identified the important characteristics you require, the choice gets narrowed down. Your gasket supplier will be able to advise if a simple conductive o-ring in a groove or die cut flat gasket will suffice, or if a more complex fabricated or moulded gasket is needed. Take the advice of your EMI gasket supplier, this should be free.